good afternoon everyone so today we are going to discuss tutorial sheet 2 so let's start the first question which says that <clears throat> so airlines sometimes overbook flights now for a plane there are 50 seats and 55 passengers have ticket now you define a random variable y which is the number of passengers who have tickets and who actually show up for the flight and the probability is given so when we say p of y it means that probability of capital y is equal to y so for example p of capital y is equal to 46 is 0 0.0 which means that the probability that 46 passengers who show up for the flight its probability is 0 0.10 now we need to find the probability that flight will accommodate all passengers who have tickets. Now it's already given that flight have 50 seats. It means it can accommodate at most 50 passengers. So we need to find the probability that Y should be at most 50. Which is same as summation probability of y is equal to y very small y is moving from 45 to 50 so we have to add all these numbers and that gives us the required answer which comes out to be 0.83 the next part says that what is the probability that not all ticketed passengers who show up can be accommodated so of course if more than 50 passengers will show up then it is not possible to accommodate so it means that if more than 50 comes then what is its probability so either there is one approach that you add the remaining one or you subtract what you have already computed from one so that gives you point one second. The next part says that if you are first person on the standby list, on the waiting list, what is the probability that you will be able to take the flight? So you will be able to take flight only if there are some vacant seats. And you need only one vacant seat. It means that if only or if at most 49 passengers would turn up then for sure you will get a seat so we need to compute y is less than or equal to 49 similarly if you are third person on the standby list then you need to compute y is less than or equal to 47 we have already seen how do we compute it so easy computation The next question says that <clears throat> suppose a computer manufacturer receives computer boards in lots of fives, so five at a time. Now two boards are selected for inspection. List all possible outcomes. So writing possible outcome is not a problem. The only thing which we need to understand is order doesn't play any role here. When you pick 2 it means simply you pick 2 it, it does not 1 comma 2 is nowhere different from 2 comma 1 both are same so now you have to write down the possible outcomes you can also compute it out of 5 you are picking 2 5 c2 or you can write down 1 2 1 3 1 4 then 2 3 2 4 and then 1 5 then 2 3 2 4 2 5 and so on Next part says that if only boards 1 and 2 are defective. So the board have given the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It is saying 1 and 2 are defective. Two boards are chosen at random. Now define a random variable which is x is number of defective boards among those inspected. Find a probability distribution of x. So here the first thing to observe here is that x is discrete random variable so it must have discrete values. 
so for the discrete values the probability distribution function would be written as probability of capital x is equal to x next thing is that what could be the possible values for a small x so it is already mentioned that at most two boards can be defective it means there may be chances no board is defective or one board is defective or two board is defective so we need to find probability of capital x is equal to small x provided small x is 0 1 or 2 so now let's compute probability of x is equal to 0 which means that no board is defective so it means you just need to see the combinations where 1 and 2 are not coming now probability of x is equal to 1 which means one of the board is defective and probability of x is equal to 2 means both the boards are defective so one way is that you see where 1 or 2 is coming so it's 6 by 10 and when both are coming it is 1 2 so it is 1 by 10 so that gives you the required probability distribution function and you say that for all other values probability of x is equal to x is equal to 0 when x is not equal to 0 so this is how we compute the probability distribution function for discrete random variable now we need to compute the cumulative distribution function so for the cumulative distribution function the idea is very simple you have x you have a small f of x which is same as probability of capital x is equal to x which is probability mass function we have just computed probability distribution and you have capital f of x which is cdf which is same as probability of capital x is less than equal to small x so x could have only two values three values 0 1 2 f of x we just computed 0.3 Point 0.1 sorry point 0.6 and point 0.1 now probability of x less than equal to 0 is same as probability of x equal to 0 so that's why it's point 0.3 probability of x less than equal to 1 because of the discrete values x have it is probability of x equal to 0 plus x equal to 1 so it means that you always keep adding the previous values so 0 0.3 plus 0 0.6 which becomes 0 0.9 and probability of x less than equal to 2 so you also add 0 0.1 so in the end when you compute cdf you will always get 1 because you have added all the probabilities so this is your required cdf yes which means that this is your f of 0 this is your f of 1 and this is your f of 2 now one important observation here is that let's say you have to compute probability of x less than equal to 1.7 now we know that x can take only values 0 1 2 it means that it is same as probability of x less than equal to other observation is let's say you have to compute probability of x less than equal to 6 which is f6 now f6 again x can have value still 2 so this is same as probability of x less than equal to 2 which is equal to 1 it means that if i have to write down in tabular form cdf for all values of x then this is how it looks like so your f of x is 0 when x is less than 0 now f of 0 is 1 so how i can define x this is equal to 0.3 now here f of x equal to 0.3 for x equal to 0 because even if i consider 0 0.5 f of 0 0.5 this is same as f of 0 
so that's why I consider this range from 0 to 1 but it is actually computing so here don't misinterpret that I have computed probability of 0 less than x is less than 1 which is 0.3 no this is not true it simply says that for what values of x you have f of x as 0.3 so when x is 0 for anything including 0 excluding 1 or for all the numbers it is 0.3 Similarly, I know that f of 1 <coughs> is 0.9, so I can mention it as even f of 1.4 is also f of 1. So that's why I wrote till 2 because f of 2 is also defined. If f of 2x does not have value 2, then it could have gone till 3, 4, or any number. And similarly, I wrote when x is greater than or equal to 2, f of x is 1 because f of 3, f of 4, f of 5 all are 0. So f of x greater than or equal to 2, it means for all values of x 2 and greater than 2, f of x is equal to 1. Again, I am repeating, this does not mean that I am computing probability of x greater than or equal to 2 is equal to 1. This is not true. It simply means that f of x is equal to 1 when x is greater than or equal to 2. You give any value to x which is greater than or equal to 2. For those values, f of x is 1. So in this problem, we have seen that how can we compute CDF from PDF. In next question, we will see how do we compute PMF from CDF, probability mass function. So now f of x is given and you need to compute PMF. So for computing PMF, first you need to see that how f of x is defined. So it is defined for 1, so f of 1 is 0.3, f of 3 is 0.4, f of 4 is 0.45, f of 6 is 0.6, and f of 12 is 1. Yes, it means that x is defined for the values 1, 3, 4, 6 and 12 and capital F of x is defined as 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.45, 0 0.6 and 1. So if I compute a small f of x, it is 0 0.3. Now in CDF you used to add here you need to subtract. So 0 0.4 minus 0 0.3 which is 0 0.1. 0 0.45 minus 0 0.4 which is 0 0.05. This is 0 0.15 and this is 0 0.4. And the idea is clear. For example, you have f of 3 is 0 0.4 which is probability of x less than or equal to 3. And also have probability of x less than or equal to 1. So if you subtract them, then of course you are getting the probability of x equal to 3 because lesser than those values you are subtracting. So this is how your PMF works. So again remember from here you can always go here you keep adding 0 0.3 plus 0 0.1 it is 0 0.4 then 0 0.4 plus 0 0.05 it is 0.45 and so on and similarly by subtracting you can get PMF. So PMF to CDF, CDF to PMF. The only thing you need to identify is that at what values x is defined, a small x. So a small x, what values it can take. So here it can take 1, 3, 4, 6, 12. Now if you have to compute probability of 3 less than equal to x is less than 6 then probability of x less than or equal to 6 minus probability of x less than 3 because equal to 3 need to be included which is same as you are if you write in other way it is probability of x equal to 3 plus probability of x equal to 4 plus x equal to 5 plus x equal to 6 you can see in this form also so here f of x is given from 3 to 3 is 0 0.1, 4 
4 is 0 0.05 so 0 0.1 0 0.05 5 is not defined so it's 0 and at 6 it is 0 0.15 this is one way of looking at it the other way is that you consider it to be this is your f of 6 so f of 6 minus you need to subtract f of 1 because when you say x less than 3 it falls into this range so this is same as 0 0.6 this is 0 0.6 f of 6 remember minus f of 1 which is 0 0.3 which is again 0 0.3 Similarly, if you have to compute probability of x greater than or equal to 4, it is same as probability of x equal to 4, then 5 is not defined, so f of 6 plus probability of x equal to 12. The same can be seen as 1 minus probability of x less than 4. So less than 4 is same as 1 minus probability of x less than or equal to 3 because at 3 it is defined which is 1 minus f of 3 so f of 3 already computed 0.4 so 1 minus 0.4 it is 0.6 okay so please carefully see this problem is very important because in last two problems we have seen that how we can get from pmf to cdf and from cdf to pmf so total sheet has three more question which is based on expectation and variance so once it is introduced then in the next video we will cover those questions thank you